praise God. Today's topic is salvation is by faith and love. The first verse that we'll be looking at today is Matthew 22, verse 36 through 38. Somebody came to Jesus and said, teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest, which is megas, the most important? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. So this is the most important commandment. Imagine being on a football team and the head coach says, hey, guys, this is the most important rule that we have here on this team. If you break this rule, right, you're going to have serious consequences. So it's the same thing in the faith. This is the most important commandment. Are we saved by faith alone? Can anyone be saved without loving God? What does Jesus say? In John 12, 49, he says, the father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. And I know his commandment is eternal life. So the commandment that the father gave the son is eternal life. The son only says and does what the father has commanded him to do. Praise God. And these commandments that the father has given the son is eternal life. Praise God. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Notice he didn't say, if you believe in me or have faith in me, you'll keep him. He says, if you love me, because love brings that desire. I remember when I played football my junior season, um, you know, I loved the game so much that I was willing to die on the football field. That's how much I love the game. And I know that's an idol that I had in my heart that the Lord had removed. Praise God, because that love that I have for football is supposed to only be for God, the Father, and his son, Jesus Christ, which is an agape love. Okay, praise God for that. All right, so John 14, 21. They who have my commandments and keep them or obey them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal or manifest and show myself to them. Praise God. So if you have his commandments and you obey them, the Son will reveal himself to you. John 14, 23. Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep or obey my word, and my father will love them. When it came to football, when my coach gave us a play call or a commandment, something to do, right? We did it because we loved the game. We loved coach. You know, Coach Bobby Bowden was a great coach. He was a Christian man, and so we wanted to uh, make him happy, you know what I'm saying? But also we wanted to win as well, so because we loved the game of football. Praise God. All right, so we love Jesus. And so, therefore, we keep his word and obey his word because we love the Father and the Son. Now, it says here, whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but from the Father who sent me. So if you don't love Jesus, you will not obey him. What does Paul say? Let anyone be accursed who has no love for the Lord. Our Lord come. And so this word accursed right here means therefore a person or thing doomed to destruction so this person cannot be saved and the apostle paul is talking about a phileo love here agape is of a more greater love than phileo and we can see that in the greek as well uh first corinthians 13 13 it says and now faith hope and love remain these three and the greatest of these is love. This is agape love. This is what the Apostle Paul is talking about. So the greatest of these is love. You see that? So faith, hope, and love. Love is greater than faith. So you have to have love to be saved. This is very clear. Galatians 5, 6. For in, the, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love praise god first timothy 4 uh, 1 14 and the grace of our lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in christ jesus first thessalonians 3 6 but timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love faith and love is all throughout the scriptures you must have faith and you must walk in love you must Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is very clear. The love of God must be in you. 
2 Thessalonians 1 3, we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you. Praise God. Philemon 1 5, I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 4 7 and 8, beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. So if someone is claiming to be a Christian, they have faith, but they do not walk in love, they do not know God because God is love. Praise God for this. Praise God. First John 5, 2, 3. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this. This is the love of God. Pay attention to this that we obey his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. I believe what I can read. So some people may be confused, right? What does not of yourselves, not of works mean? I'm confused about Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Some people can be confused about Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 because it says, for we are saved by the grace of God through faith, not of yourselves, not of works that no man can boast. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and break this down. Proper exegesis. So Ephesians historical context. In Acts chapter 9, 19, verse 1 and 3, while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. Okay. In verse 3, then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. So we see that these were Jews who became Christians. Uh, they were first baptized into John's baptism, which was for Israel. Right. Remember, John uh, came to, to prepare the way, prepare the hearts of men, a baptism of repentance. So what was the Jewish belief on atonement? This is very important. We need to understand the Jewish belief on atonement in the Old Covenant. So Leviticus 5, 7, you had to pay for your sins. You literally had to pay money for your sins. So, But if you cannot afford a sheep, you shall bring to the Lord as your penalty for the sin that you have committed, two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for a purification offering and the other for a burnt offering. OK, so the Jews believe that they had to pay for their sins. Um, I'm going to sh show a clip from uh, Shmuley, who is a modern day Jewish rabbi on his belief on atonement. To speak in a way that is not righteous. And before I started this debate, since I did not see her until moments before the debate began, I just returned back. I had to go and I had to apologize to her. I had to say I was sorry for the hurtful things that I said to such a beautiful, special soul. Because nobody died for my sins. Because I am accountable for my own actions. Because the good that I do, I can take pride in. And the bad that I do, I take shame in. All right. Praise God. So now we can get the actual context of what the Apostle Paul is saying, because now we actually have a cultural background and understanding of what they believe. Old Covenant, the Day of Atonement, which was once every year they had to sacrifice animals for the forgiveness of sins. So this was of themselves. This is something that they did of works, and this was of themselves. They had to pay money for this. Now, the New Covenant, which is believing in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was the sacrificial Lamb of God. His death, burial, and resurrection was the atonement for our sins. And this was a stumbling block for many of the Jews because it was different according to the Old Testament where it was of themselves. It was works where they had to literally pay money to buy a, a lamb or a turtle dove for their sins. And you can see how um, a modern day rabbi, Jewish rabbi, believes about atonement. And so when the Apostle Paul says it is through faith of so Jesus Christ the Son of God is the doorway to salvation. We must believe in him and his work on the cross. Jesus says in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Praise God. All right. So I believe what I can read. Um, I believe that salvation is by faith and love. You must love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love is greater than faith. We see this 1 Corinthians 13, 13, okay? And if we love 
uh, God, we know him. And if we love our neighbor, we know him as well. Praise God for that. So I pray that this message has blessed you. I love y'all and God bless. Feel the spirit in my lyrics, that's a merit. No, I'm not a Calvinist, but you call me a heretic. The world see us fighting, man, that mess is so embarrassing. So I took the hatchet, I was swinging and just buried it. Only God gets the glory. Tell me what else matters. The game got me pissed off like I got a bad bladder. And we acting just like a bunch of crabs in a barrel. Say we serve God, but we committed to the Pharaoh. Bows in my quiver, bump stones, we throwing arrows. Murder our own fam, the road was supposed to be narrow. Them words cut deep, almost touching my bone marrow. Talk crazy.